Welcome to Opalest TV. Today we're here in New York with Mark Malik, founder of the Conquest Capital Group, an alternative asset manager with roughly a half billion dollars in assets under management. Now, Mark, I want to get into your strategies, your systematic strategies, but first, can you give our viewers, our audience, an introduction into your professional history and how you came to launch your own firm? I sort of ended up on Wall Street uh, almost by accident. I was uh, a junior at Caltech uh, studying neural networks and decision support systems and artificial intelligence when I received a grant from the Pentagon through the Jet Propulsion Lab uh, that NASA and Caltech uh, run together to do a study on how to position tanks in a battlefield to optimize the chance of winning using a new mathematical technique called scenario analysis. Without going into a lot of the detail, I ended up doing the research that uh, resulted in a paper that was published and had an application in finance that uh, attracted the attention of the head of financial strategy at Solomon Brothers, who essentially called me up, invited me to New York, and uh, offered me a job on the spot. So that was the end of my uh, PhD plans. and and academic plans and the beginning of my Wall Street life. In 93, I left to join an ex-Solomon trader who uh, had set up his own hedge fund. I was there until the end of 94 when I was recruited by UBS to start and run their global groups in exotic derivatives. I built and ran these groups in New York, London, and Tokyo, living in all three places, globalized the business, ran it until 97 when UBS and SBC merged, and I was promoted to run the combined bank's prop trading groups in Europe and the Americas in FX and derivatives. And I did that until the beginning of 99, um, when I decided to leave and start my own firm. Tell me how you developed uh, the Conquest Risk Index, which Bloomberg has been publishing since 2005. The Conquest Risk Index is supposed to give us a reflection of the overall risk appetite in the market, how market participants are feeling. So the idea that I had in 2004 was that if we can somehow model the risk, in, the risk environment and then prove that the way we've modeled the risk environment actually shows a statistically significant effect on the performance of various sectors and strategies, then we can move from a static risk allocation to the various components within our funds to a dynamic risk allocation that is based on the risk environment where we vary our risk allocation depending on the environment that we're currently in. Mark, introduce us to the STAR program. What is Conquest STAR and what makes it unique? The STAR strategy is one that we launched in uh, 2010 with proprietary capital, and it truly represents our best idea fund. It's really a culmination of all the research and the models that we developed over the past 10 years that we put together in a way that is a pure alpha, all-weather type strategy. One way to think of Conquistar is really as two separate strategies. One strategy in risk-seeking periods and one strategy in risk-averse periods. Ideally, what we want is in risk-seeking periods to look as much as possible like a typical hedge fund that is long risk assets and benefiting from it. But in risk-averse periods, we want to look like the opposite of that. And herein lies the challenge. We believe through the combination of four sub-strategies that we have in Conquest R, where each one employs dozens of individual models, and the overlaying of the dynamic allocation from our risk index, and the way we vary the allocation to our portfolio, allow us to achieve fairly well-respected returns in most of the environment. We still need oxygen to operate. And for us, the oxygen is market movement. Um, as long as we get 
any market movement, uh, preferably with some amount of momentum, then STAR does extremely well. So what is it that makes your approach unique in comparison to traditional CTAs and systematic strategies? We start with a market observation. Then we try to put that observation into an algorithm. Once we have it into an algorithm, then we can go back and uh, program it and code it and backtest it and uh, run stress tests on it and do all sorts of things until we're very comfortable with it. That's how we develop our models. Our models are an extension of our own market observations that um, we fully understand and uh, we believe we know when they're supposed to be doing well and they're not supposed to be doing well. In the models that we built, we're always looking at them from two dimensions. We're looking from the quantitative side, but we're also looking for alpha that makes sense. So what kind of risk environment are we in right now? And we've seen that two-third, one-third distribution of risk-seeking to risk-averse markets sort of turned on its head a little bit. And we've been running closer to 85-15, where 2016 actually ended up being 88% risk-seeking and only 12% risk-averse. And 2017 actually is putting that to shame, looking almost like 100% risk-seeking. But from all our analysis, the risk environment in the long run tends to be mean reverting and any periods we've seen in the past where we've strayed uh, sufficiently either in depth or length from that two-third, one-third equilibrium, something happened to snap us back into place. So why is now a good time for investors to look at the STAR program? I believe that now is generally a very good time to invest in quant and trading strategies in general, and in our star product in particular. So it has very little dependency on market condition, and it usually doesn't take uh, that much of uh, market volatility or uh, movement for us to capitalize on it. Even last year, 2016, that ended up being 88% risk-seeking, 12% risk averse. But we did see a couple of risk-averse events during that year. There was the Jan-Feb market hiccup and there was Brexit. And that was enough for Conquest Star to finish at a very respectable, I believe, 17% return on the year. Now, if markets actually go through a much higher vol environment where we're looking more like 2008 and less like 2016. That would also be pretty welcome for a strategy like STAR in the sense that when you benefit from market movement, regardless of whether it is to the upside or the downside, you welcome any large movement in the market. Now, from our experience, uh, generally when you study volatility, you notice that for risk assets in particular, Volatility on the downside tends to be a lot more severe than volatility on the upside. So downside move happen in a much higher volatility way than upside move happen. And given that Conquest Star is a strategy that benefits from an overall higher, vo higher volatility in the market, by the same token, if we do get any large market sell-off, it should be fairly beneficial for the strategy, although we don't require that large market sell-off to be very profitable over time.